So to make a confidence interval for P, the first condition is that your sample must be random. Um, before I forget, all of these confidence intervals today are intervals for P. So what we're doing, and I'd write this at the top, and let me verify before I get too crazy. I just want to make sure that I'm 100% right. So we're doing a one sample Z interval for P. We're doing a one sample Z interval because you use a Z score for a proportion. So we're not going to talk about means today at all. We're only talking about proportions. And the first condition to be able to use a one sample Z interval is that your data should come from a that's a big blank for the word random. So there's got to be more words there. Come from a randomly selected, oh, a well-designed, a well-designed random sample. So well-designed means you just you didn't just go choose all your friends or you didn't randomly select 10 of your friends. Like you, you want to make sure that you are taking a good representation of the population. So you want a well-designed random sample or a randomized experiment. Otherwise, there is no scope for inference to a population or inference about cause and effect if you're talking about an experiment. So if our sample is not random, we can't generalize to the entire population. Because if their sample is not random, it probably does not represent the entire population. So I could not use you guys to make inference about all students at Cyprus because you guys are a very specific group of students at Cyprus. You guys all take AP classes or AAP class. So if you want to make generalizations about the population, you have to have a sample that represents the population and how you get that is random sampling. The next one is called the large counts condition and he's this guy. You have to check that n times p hat is greater than or equal to 10 and n times 1 minus p hat is greater than or equal to 10. So the method used to construct a confidence interval for p depends on whether the sampling distribution of p hat is approximately normal. So it depends on whether the sampling distribution of p hat is approximately normal. We can use the normal approximation to the sampling distribution of p hat if this condition is met. So this is just saying you can use your z table if this condition is met. 
Now, what that looked like in chapter 7 was slightly different. And by chapter 7, I mean our last unit. So, in our last unit, we had to check that n times p was greater than or equal to 10 and n times 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 10. So this guy says here, why don't we use p like in chapter 7, which for you guys was unit 5? And the answer is, we don't know p. We're trying to estimate p, so we use our sample value as our best estimate. So we don't know p, that's what we're trying to find. So we use p hat as that estimate for p. So it has to be random so that we can make the claim about the population. We have to have large counts so that we can use a z critical score or a z critical value. And then the last thing is your sampling has to be, or your sample has to be less than or equal to 10%. So this first one is called the random condition. Write that in if you, if you didn't. The first one is the random condition. The second one is just the large counts condition. And now this third one is referred to as the 10% condition. So the procedure for calculating Confidence intervals assumes that individual observations are independent. Well-conducted studies that use random sampling or random assignment can help ensure independent observations. However, the formula for standard deviation of the sampling distribution assumes we are sampling with replacement from a population. So what that means is we take a sample of 50 people. So let's say we put all their names in a hat. We have 200 names in a hat, and we want to randomly select 10 names. This um, procedure for finding a confidence interval is assuming that you put those 10 people back in the hat and then shake it and draw another sample of 10 people. But in real life, we very randomly sample with replacement. When we're truly taking samples, we very rarely do this. So we rarely sample with replacement. So the workaround is that you cannot sample more than 10% of the population. That's why we check the 10% condition. If the 10% condition is met, then you can find the standard error of your sample, which you've already done with this formula. And then lastly, it asks one more time, why don't we use P and find sigma sub p hat like we did on or in unit five. Well, once again, because we don't know p. So we replace p with our estimate. When the standard deviation is found using p hat instead of true p, it's called standard error. It's not called standard deviation anymore. It's called standard error. So that is a lot of information. And the biggest takeaway is the names, random condition, large counts condition, 10% condition. And then the other takeaway is random condition just means your sample has to be random. Large counts means you check that these two things are greater than or equal to 10. 
And 10% condition means you cannot sample more than 10% of the population. That's all you have to really remember from this conditions page. Now, before I forget, make sure that you guys know that there is a difference between a problem saying the sample was randomly selected and an SRS was taken. It is only an SRS if they specifically say in the prompt, it's an SRS. Sometimes you guys, well, some of you got in the habit in unit five when you checked the random condition of just saying it was an SRS, but it's not unless it specifically uses those letters. So be careful on that. Okay, so this goes through and shows you how you get, a, how you truly get a critical value. And we often refer to that as Z critical. This Z star means Z critical. It's your critical value and it's a Z value. Why is it a Z value? Because it comes from the normal curve. So then all that's left for us is to construct, to construct our confidence interval, but check our conditions before we do that. So the first problem says create a 95% confidence interval to estimate the population proportion of licensed drivers who are willing to run a very yellow light. I think that's probably 90%. The population distribution is left skewed and SRS of 48 licensed drivers found that 35 were willing to do it. So the first thing that we do is um, make it clear what are we doing? So we are estimating P equals the proportion of licensed drivers who are willing to run a very yellow light. And I'm taking that directly from the prompt. Proportion of licensed drivers who are willing to run a very yellow light. Okay, next question is, how do we do that? Well, we are going to make a one sample Z interval for P. How do we do this? We make a one sample Z interval for P. And that is part of your solution. They do want you to clearly state what you're doing. How we do that is this formula. And when I do these on my own, I actually write this out. So everything that I have written here for you guys is exactly what I would write on my solution I have just written it for us to save a little bit of time. So P hat, well, first we should probably calculate P hat. So I'm going to just do that right here. I'm going to write a comma and I'm going to say P hat equals. Well, I sampled 48 people and 35 said they were willing to run the light. So 35 divided by 48, I'm going to do 0.73. If you want to do 0.729, that's totally fine. I'm going to make my life a little bit easy, though, and do just 73. 
then I'm going to ask myself, was this sample random? Yes, they told me it was random. I'm not even going to write anything down for that one. I'm just going to verify to myself, yes, this is a representative example. So this p hat always reminds me, make sure that I find my p. Plus or minus your z critical. So right here, I'm checking, can I use a z approximation? So this says, use a normal approximation because n times p, well, n was 48. So 48, sorry, n times p hat, 48 times 0.73. That gives me 3504. That is greater than or equal to 10. Is that what you guys get? And then 48 times 27, 0.27, sorry, gives me 1296, and that is also greater than or equal to 10. So I just verified to myself, and you can write it down if you want to, that an SRS was taken. That applies to this guy. And all I'm asking myself is, does my sample represent the population? Yes, if it's random, it does. So if you wanted to check all of them here, you could just say SRS was taken. You are not required to check this though. And by that, I mean you are not required to write it down to get full credit. The only ones you have to write down for full credit are these two. So yes, we can use the normal approximation. And then lastly, can we calculate standard error? So N is all licensed drivers. So it is definitely reasonable to assume that 48 is less than or equal to one-tenth of that population. So this guy says, yes, we can generalize about everybody, all the licensed drivers. Yes, I can use a z-score because large counts is met. And yes, I can calculate standard error because the 10% condition. So right here, I make my confidence interval. So I say 0 0.73 plus or minus my Z critical for a 95% is 1.96. And then I'm just going to make the big old root thingy. So this is 0.73 times 0.27 all over 48. And then I just plug that into my calculator exactly like that. So I do... 0.73 minus 1.960, and then I do blue button, x squared, green button, y equals, and choose option one to get the fraction, because that's easiest for me. 0.73 times 0.27 all over 48, enter and I get a lower bound of 0.604. I only round to two places he here because it's easier. 
it's easier than doing 7.29 and 2.81 or whatever it is. But once I go to make my interval, I usually do three decimal places. Then I just copy that same thing I plugged into my calculator and arrow over and change the minus to a plus. So my upper bound is 856. And then we can conclude. We are 95% confident that the interval from 0 0.604 to, don't write a comma, write the word to, 856, or you can say 60.4% to 85.6%, whatever you prefer, captures the true and then copy that phrase exactly from up here. Proportion of licensed drivers who are willing to run a very yellow red light. That's not the case. Very yellow light. What is happening in that other classroom? Sounds like they're listening to opera. So the only thing that we're adding on to what you have previously done is this part right underneath the formula and this one sample Z interval for P. These two things are the only things just kidding. Those two things are the only things that are new. Because of that, I think you guys should try A without me. I think you should try just part A. If you want to give part B a go, you can. But let's take like three to four minutes for you guys to try example two, part A. So a recent Gallup poll conducted telephone interviews with a random sample of adults aged 18 and older to determine what proportion say football is their favorite sport to watch on TV. Data were attained, obtained for 1,000 people and P hat is 37%. So let me help you with this first one. We are estimating P equals the proportion of adults aged 18 and over who will say football is their favorite sport to watch on TV. Holy moly, that's long. I wanted to do that one for you because it's not, it doesn't say it like that in your prompt. So adults aged 18 and older proportion who say football is their favorite sport to watch on TV. So I put those two things together. Okay, you guys give it a try. I'm going to write mine down and then I'll walk around and check on you guys.
flip my paper back to the last page just in case it helps you guys not have to flip back and forth. about another minute and a half. About a minute. Okay, so I got 34 to 40%. Is that close to what you guys got? Okay. So um, check conditions. N is all adults aged 18 and older, so it's reasonable to assume 1,000 is less than or equal to 1 tenth N. And then the fill in the blank was a little bit shorter than the first one. Make sure that you wrote this one sample Z interval for P. 
Okay, last question. Explain, is it plausible that the population's proportion who prefer football is 36%? So is P equal 0 0.36 plausible? So the question is, is it in our interval? And the answer is yes. So yes. 36% is a plausible population proportion because it is in the interval. So notice this isn't saying, this isn't a claim that, that we're being asked to support. It's just saying, is 36 plausible? The answer is yes, because any value from 34 to 40 is plausible. The can you do's, so I'm going to give you a little bit of guidance on a couple of them and then let you work. Let me find my key. So just to give you an example, And I ran out of room because I wrote way too big. But the first one that you do um, on your own is binge drinking. And all it says is use our what, how, conclude format. So this is my conclusion. I wrote too big, so I didn't have enough room for my conclusion. But if I show you my work, my work looks exactly like your note sheet. I just fill in the parts that were printed for me. So I do go in and say, we are estimating. I clearly state that it's a one sample Z interval. I write that formula out and I check my conditions just like we did on the note sheet. And then I calculated my confidence interval and if I would have been a little bit better prepared, I would have had room for my conclusion. So I, I learned from that mistake and then was able to fit it all in for the texting problem. And then you have one last one that's about getting tutoring for taking the SAT. So on all of them, I follow the framework from the notes. The other thing that I wanted to show you or give you guidance on is the first two problems on the can you do. So all it wants you to do on those is check conditions. It doesn't want you to construct an interval. All it wants you to do is verify that the random condition was met, that the large counts condition was met, and that the 10% condition is met. So like for the random condition, I would say, okay, an SRS of 50 was taken. So that one's met. Then for large counts, I would have to go in and calculate n times p hat, n times one minus p hat, and verify that they're greater than or equal to 10. So 27 and 28 are just asking you to check conditions. That's it. I will, when I put up solutions, I will give you the full solutions to 27, and you'll try 28 on your own. 31 is exactly page... 611. So it's exactly what you did on page 611. It just wants you to show how you get the Z critical for a 98% confidence interval. So the front page and then three free response 
and that's it. I will put up solutions today. And if you want me to check anything while you're working, I'm happy to do that. So for the rest of the period, I would first get all your quizzes done, all quizzes in Canvas. Make sure that those are all done and then work on your can you do. 